Good morning. I'm Eugene May. I'm the teacher of Eagles Wings Ministries located in Dover, Florida. And I invite you to stay tuned for the next few minutes as we talk about conquering life's pressures. We've been talking about several weeks and today I want to finish this topic and then next week we will begin another. But I want us to take our Bibles and turn with me to Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15. God is speaking to the nation of Israel and he's talking about the opportunity that he has given them to really be the people that he created them to be. He says, For thus says the Lord God, Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength, but you would not. Do you hear that last statement? Really an accusation from God saying, I have given you all of these opportunities. I have given you the right to return and rest and be saved, to live in quietness and confidence and let that quietness and confidence be your strength. But you made a decision, no. I will not. Now, that is quite an accusation against the people. But God wants us to understand that he has his will and his purpose for us. And you and I, like Israel, have an opportunity to walk in that victory, overcome the pressures and circumstances of life, and God wants us to take that advantage. I hope that if anybody ever talks about the church of the age in which we're living and uh, tries to write and say what kind of character they had, that they would say, <laughs> and we would. We would do what God says. Now, we've been talking about this and we laid a foundation talking about why it is he say certain things and it says in the scripture that we just read that in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. You see, God wants us to recognize that as we begin to rest in him, as we begin to see that he is the faithful God and that he will do what he has promised, things will begin to change in our lives and in our circumstances. Psalm 46.10, a verse that we have looked at, it says that we're to be still and know that he is God. That is a difficult thing for most of us. We're in a world that is just going faster and faster and faster and faster. And it's more difficult for us to be still not be doing something, but be waiting on God than at ever, than in any era in the, la, in the past. God wants us to be able to take what he has promised and put it to effect in our lives. He says that in quietness and confidence, we can live. That means that we can have assurance and we can have certainty in our lives. We looked at Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40 verse 28 begins like this. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall, but those who wait, those who wait, I'm going to say it again, 
those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so there's a lot to be said to us about waiting on the Lord, waiting for him to move. I know that uh, some of us really like to get busy, busy, busy. I'm that way. I like to be busy. I want to be going places. I want to be doing things. But there are times that God says to me, stop, stop. Let me be in control. Let me give you opportunities and show you which opportunities to take. Now, when we look at his promises, and we have done that over these last several weeks, when we look at his promises, we see that all of the promises of God in him are yes. And when we say amen to the promises of God, God comes to our rescue, so to speak. He comes and he begins to move within us. And so all of those promises, over 7,000 promises that are in this Bible, all of those promises are yes. And when we say amen to the promises of God, what we are saying is, I agree with you, God. I agree with you. I'm going to walk in unity with you. I'm going to let you be the leader of everything in my life. And so when we begin to walk by the promises of God, we find ourselves overcoming the control of sin in our lives. Romans 6.14 says, sin will have no dominion over us. No dominion over us. For we are not under the law, but we're under grace. Not only when we walk by the promises of God will we overcome the control of sin, but we will overcome defeat. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, it says that, And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord will preserve us. And so when we begin to walk in the promises of God, we discover that God is for us. And we begin to receive those things. Our concern for provision is taken away. Right now with everything that's been going on in the world for the last several years, a lot of of people are concerned for the provision of their lives. And I understand that. I'm not saying that you'll never be concerned about those things in the sense that uh, you have to get out and, and make a living and you have to do the things that are necessary. But God wants us to learn to rest in his promises because he wants us to know that if he fed <laughs> the fowls of the air and, and all of the other animals, that he's going to feed us. That he's going to make a way. He's going to make a way for us. You see, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 33, this is what Jesus said. He said, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But here's the key. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As we trust in the promises of God, we overcome the control of sin in our lives. We overcome defeat. We overcome the concern that we have for the provisions of our lives. But we also overcome loneliness. One of the things that I have noticed over these last several years, that in the midst of all of the pandemic, all of the uh, 
shutdowns that governments tried to force upon us. All of these things caused people to seem to be at alone. Uh, in fact, they were alone. Many people in their homes were alone in despair because God did not create us to be isolated individuals. And when we isolate ourselves, something happens on the inside and we feel abandonment. We feel all those things. But you see, God didn't create that. That was man. God wants you to be filled with his presence. A scripture that I know we've already looked at in the past, but a scripture that is so important for me and my life and my walk with God is found in Hebrews chapter 13, verses five through six. He says, let your conduct be without covetousness, be content with such things as you have. And then here's the promise. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh, what, did, what did he say? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I shall not fear. What can man do to me? Wow. Wow. I want to read that part again. It says, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we, that's you and me, can boldly say, boldly declare about ourselves. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. And then the question, what can man do to me? And I want to tell you, the answer is nothing. The world, the flesh, the devil, mankind, they cannot rob us of our assurance and our destiny that we have in God by all the things that they might try to do. Because God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Those are promises that we must hold on to. Now, as we finish this topic today, I want to take you into several verses of Scripture that I think will really encourage you. In the book of Philippians, chapter 1 and verse 6, we see that God has a purpose in everything that He does in our lives. He has a purpose. Let me read that Scripture to you. Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident, confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you know God's purpose was not only to begin a good work in you, but was to complete that good work. He who has begun a good work in you shall complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. That means until he comes. And so that should give us assurance, should give us this certainty in life. Because remember what he said? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So what I have begun, I am going to finish. I am going to work within you. One of the things that really concerns me about a lot of Christians, and they're Christians that believe, they say, like you and me, we believe not only in salvation, but we believe in the, we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit moving within our lives. We believe in his power being released even through us. But having said that, actions often speak louder than words. We say what we believe, but we don't act. 
we don't say we're not going to be defeated. We don't say, Satan, you're under our feet. We don't say that we have the abundant life that God has so graciously given to us. I was in Canada this past weekend. In fact, I got home pretty late last night. I was teaching a series of teachings that really dovetail into what I've been teaching you the last several weeks. We were talking about this life that wins. And one of the things that God had me do was to really speak to those people about coming out from under the pressures that the people have put upon them and many times put upon themselves. Why? Because God wants them to complete the thing that he has started in their lives. He wants you to complete the thing that he has started in your life. And he is our helper, and he's going to help us do that. So when the pressures get great, what do we do? Do we throw up our hands and do we quit? Or do we say, no, I'll tell you what I am doing. I am going to depend upon God because if God knows how to take care of the birds of the air and all of those things, he knows how to take care of me. And I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him for my provision. I'm going to trust him to take away the loneliness, the things that uh, have wanted to attack my mind, maybe even during this pandemic that we've experienced, and then watch him complete the work in me. Hallelujah. Now, I want to tell you that God is the God of strength. He is the God of strength. In that scripture that we began this teaching in, I want to go back and read it. This is what it says. For thus says the Lord God, Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved, but in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Quietness and confidence. I love that word confidence because that's where our strength is going to come from. Remember, Paul said in Philippians 1.6, he says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in us will perform it into the day of Christ Jesus. So we can have that confidence. Now, overcoming evil temptations and overcoming the pressures of life, I believe all work the same way. How do we do that? You see, we go to the scripture and we remind ourselves of what God has already said to us and what he has already accomplished in and through us. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, he says this, Yet in all these things, what things? All of the stuff that's been going on in the world, all of the things with that, um, <laughs> that COVID, I didn't even want to say the word. All of the things that have been going on in this world have put pressure on us. But in all of these things, he says, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We need to remember that. More than conquerors. More than just people who win a battle occasionally. We are those who walk in dominion, in domination over the world, over the flesh, and over Satan. And so we overcome every temptation that comes. How? 
by being confident in every situation and being confident that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And then there's another area that I want us just to briefly talk about. And that is that God wants us to remain faithful during every trial, every situation or circumstance that may arise. That's one of the things that has concerned me over these last several years is that, yes, people have been under attack, but they've not remained faithful. They've not continued to be the people of faith that God created them to be. The people that faith that were born through their experience of being born again. You see, God created us to be faithful. God's desire for you is to be faithful. I love what is said in the book of Deuteronomy. It says this, that he is the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Do you know what he is really saying there? He's saying, I'm the faithful God and I am going to keep covenant with faithful people who will do what I have said. And so we are being strengthened by the overcoming power of God within us because we are realizing that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. But then at the same time, we, go, we are going to remain faithful to him. Now I say we because I get under pressure too. I have the same kind of pressures come against me that you have come against you. But then God wants us to take another step. He wants us to remember that he is going to do the things in us that he started and that we that are more than conquerors. But he also wants us to remain faithful in the midst of the circumstances and situations that we face. But he also wants us to dare to manifest the power of God for everyone around us. Now you say, wait a minute. Me manifest the power of God? Yes. I like what Daniel says. In the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32, that book says to us, it says, but the people who do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people who do know their God, that's you and me. We know our God. We know him by relationship. We're a part of the family. He's our papa. He's our daddy. He is our father. And hallelujah for that. But one of the things that we need to understand, that knowing God is supposed to do something within us, empower us. It's supposed to strengthen us and cause us to be strong and to carry out exploits, to do the will of God, the purpose of God. That means that because we're overcoming and we are overcoming these pressures of life that come against us, we can help other people overcome. How do we do that? We testify about our victory. We tell folks, yes, I've been where you are, but God. 
but God has stepped into the circumstance of my life. But God has come into me and he has proven himself powerful and he has brought restoration. He has brought all that he has promised in me and he can do it in you. Testimony is so, so important. As we testify of what God has accomplished in us, but then we go even further than testimony where we begin to demonstrate, demonstrate, manifest that power of God for everyone around us. I remember back many years ago when we first received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, 1973. I remember that we were challenged. We were challenged to lay hands on people publicly and speak healing. And my attitude at first was, well, what if they don't get healed? My attitude changed because I said, what if they do get healed? And I came at it from a different point. And we started seeing people healed. We have saw people in front of crowds of people receive sight and replace their blindness. We heard people speak who couldn't speak. All of those things and we demonstrated them so that other people could say, me too, God. Other people could say, you did it for that person. You can also do it for me. You see, this is a part of why God has done what he has done in us. Why he has given us opportunities to overcome things so that we can, yes, testify, but yes, we can demonstrate and that we can pray for those in need. And we then, in turn, it's like a circle that just keeps going, keeps going. In turn, we can have confidence that God will do exactly what he has said again and again and again. David, the king of Israel, was coming toward the end of his life. And he says in Psalm 37, verse 25, he says, I have been young and am now old, but I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed, his children, begging bread. Do you know what he was really saying to us there? He is saying God did it before and he's going to do it again. This is the kind of God that we have. He's going to do it again in us, but he's going to do it again through us, where we will have that strength, that overcoming power to touch other people and see them come to the same liberty, the same freedom that we have. I want us to bring this to an end today with a prayer of faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you, what you for what you have spoken to us to encourage us in the things of the Spirit. I want to thank you for delivering us and helping us overcome the life pressures that are happening to each one of us. I want to thank you, God, that you are doing all things well in each one of us right now. But Father, more than anything, I want to thank you that you are causing us to be empowered because of the victories that we win, empowered to be able to touch the lives of other people and see them also receive, but not only receive, but to be empowered. And I thank you for this, and I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen.
been a pleasure speaking to you today. And I thank God for you and I thank God for what he is doing in your life. And I pray that today that you will walk free from life's pressures and that you're overcoming in every area. If you want to be a part of what we're doing, just go to Eugene May at eugenemay.org and uh, you can go there on PayPal. That's our keywords on PayPal if you would like to contribute to what we are doing here. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And we will see you next week. Blessings. Bye-bye.